morning. The, uh, the scripture is quite clear and it says that even these many will forget but we won't and behold I have inscribed you in the palm of my hand says the Lord. And Father this morning we thank you that each and every one that has gone on before us has been inscribed in your hands. Lord today we thank you as it's already been said that you've opened up the, the heavens for each and every one of us and you've cleared the skies for us today. Father, we pray for each and every one that's here and all of those that have gone on before us. Lord, that your hand would be upon them, your hedge around them. And we stand in a remembrance of each of those who have given their lives for this great nation. Thank you, Father, for keeping us, watching over us, and allowing us to walk in that freedom that you have promised through the blood of Jesus Christ and through the men and women who solidify that freedom every single day of their lives through our military. Today, Lord, we thank you for each one that's standing here also. Thank you that as we've come in remembrance of all that you have done, we're reminded of the greatest love that there is, that we lay down our lives for another. Bless each and every one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask Commander of Post, VFW Post 1314, Joe Dravick to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Detail, port, arms. Thank your veterans for your service and the families who supported them. Veterans, hand salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. I'd like to introduce Jean Laporta with the DAR. For those who don't know, that's Daughters of the American Revolution. Thank you. Thank you. I'm representing the Hendrick Hudson chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. When I say that our debt as a free people to the men and women who have sacrificed in service of this country cannot be repaid. They do deserve our mindful gratitude every day. The Hendrick Hudson chapter DAR is committed thank you, to keeping the memory and of the sacrifice of the service of the men and women alive and holding their stories safely for all to know. We thank them best by emulating their service to country. In the words of John Fitzgerald Gerald Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, but rather what you can do for your country, sums it up 
quite well. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I was wondering if there was a representative from the city of Hudson. There he is. Here's the mayor. I didn't get to see you before. This is Kamal Johnson. He's the mayor of the city of Hudson, and he's going to speak a few words. Thank you for coming. Of course. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for being here today as we celebrate those who we have lost their lives after serving in service to protect our freedoms. I want to welcome those who gave and served and thank everyone and their families for their commitment and sacrifice to our nation. As the weather is not so great today, we still, serve, we still show up to honor those who braved uncharted territories and some of the worst conditions so that we may have the freedoms that we have today. They wage war so that we can know peace. Millions of names of Americans we have lost, I ask you to think of the ones that stand out to you and say thank you as you have so many times. One of those names that stuck out to me is my father, whose grave I saw for the first time last year, and above his name read U.S. Army. I am honored that he was one of the ones who said I'll go when the nation was in need. I want to thank everyone for gathering here today. God bless all of you, and God bless America. Thank you. At this time, I have uh, Miss Nellie Rustic Music, who's going to sing our national anthem. to introduce Mr. Stephen May. He's our guest speaker today. He's Lieutenant Colonel, retired from the U.S. Army National Guard. Steve.
Hey, Gid. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity and the uh, honor to be here as a speaker. We observe today's events, um, but as we do this today, we're also called to observe other events. Three times a year, we're called to, called to pause and recognize those who serve our nation. Armed Forces Day was just recently here in May, and that recognizes those who continue to serve in our uniforms right now, in our nation's uniform right now. In addition to that, we have Veterans Day on November 11th, which recognizes those of us who served previously and are no longer serving in uniform. Um, but today, we're here specifically to recognize those um, who have paid the ultimate and the, the um, ultimate sacrifice. The reason we're here is not for hot dogs and hamburgers, flowing beer and the end of spring, beginning of summer. It's because of names like that on the board. I wear a gold star pin, family pin on my collar. I lost my brother in Vietnam May 5th, 1968 to a Vietnamese rocket. It's personal. Ed didn't tell me there was going to be this many people here. The reason we're here today is actually multiple. There's 1,304,683 reasons why we're here today. As of April 2021, that's how many people have sacrificed their life for our nation. So it's not about, um, it's not about hamburgers and hot dogs. It's not about the end of spring. It's not about the beginning of summer. The Gold Star family pin represents a scar on the heart of every individual who has lost somebody personal to them, a family member. But in addition to the Gold Star family members standing among the crowd here and at every one of these kind of events around the nation are other people who remember those who have fallen because they were next to someone who, when, when a fallen comrade, when a camp comrade fell. As a 32-year veteran of the U.S. Marine Corps and the United States Army, and a Gold Star family member, I take personal pride in the sacrifice of every service member, whether they're living, a veteran, or whether their names are on these, these plaques. But in addition to that, I pay tribute to every one of the family members as well. Because military service is not an individual thing. It's not just one person who sacrifices. Every member of that family sacrifices. And when that veteran or when that combat veteran comes home, it's the family that suffers through the sweats and the nightmares and the pain that is brought with it, that comes back with them. So life for a combat veteran doesn't end when they redeploy. It goes on for some of us for eternity. How many, the, the, the battlefield continues to rage continuously. We can still experience death on the battlefield of Agent Orange. We still ex experience death on the battlefield of suicides, drugs overdoses, alcoholism. We owe it to our veterans, we owe it to those who have sacrificed on our behalf to do more than just have picnics on Memorial Day and on these special holidays. I also wear on my collar today a Pray for America pin. Our nation's going through some very challenging times, but it's not times that we haven't been warned about. In 1837, President Andrew Jackson issued a charge, and I quote, but you must, you must remember, my fellow citizens, that eternal vigilance by the people is the price of liberty, and that you must pay the price if you wish to secure the blessing. You have no longer any cause to fear danger from, the, from abroad. Your strength and power are well known throughout the civilized world, as well as the high and gallant bearing of your sons. It is from within among yourselves, from cupidity, from corruption, from disappointed ambition, from inordinate thirst for power that factions will be formed and liberty endangered. 
It is against such designs, whatever disguise the actors may assume, that you have especially to guard yourselves. You have the highest of human trust committed to your care. Providence has showered on this favored, on this favored land blessings without number and has chosen you as the guardians of freedom to preserve it for the benefit of the human race. May he hold, may he hold, who holds in his hands the destinies of nations make you worthy of the favors he has bestowed and, and enable you with pure hearts and pure hands and seepless vigilance to guard and defend it to the end of time, the great charge he has committed to your keeping." Unquote. A little over 150 years ago, our nation was in a uh, battle of division. And at that time, on November 19, 1863, in a small town in Pennsylvania, then President Abraham Lincoln gave a speech dedicating the burial ground of those from both sides, all Americans, who died on that three-day battlefield. He closed with these stirring and still applicable words, and I quote, but, but in, larger, in larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they have thus far so nobly carried on. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they were here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation shall have a new birth of freedom, and that this government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. But we have warnings that are even older than that. 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul wrote in his second letter to the Thessalonians, at chapter 2, verse 3, quote, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. The Greek word for falling away is apostasia. It's, we use today the term apostasy. Simply what it means is to, de to depart from revealed truth, to lead away, to seduce, to mislead, to defect, to blind the eyes of people by manipulating the truth, to turn one from the truth by lying signs and wonders. As I was finishing this up, I came across a quote from uh, Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas. Tom Cotton's a veteran of Iraq, of the Iraq conflict, and he made a speech at Hillsdale College on April 9, 2019, where he recalls placing flags for Memorial Day on the tombs of the soldiers at the Arlington National Cemetery. And he says that one of the things that he said was this, quote, every hero of Arlington had a few moments that day with a soldier who delivered a powerful message to the dead and the living alike. You are not forgotten. And as he continued on, he finished with this, he, he also included this quote, which I think talks about why we're here today. Quote, we honor our fallen for them, of course, but also for us, the living. Their stories of heroism, of sacrifice, of patriotism remind us of what is best in ourselves, and they teach our children what is best in America. I pray for a people of a nation that forgets or disregards the tremendous sacrifices made to ensure they have the opportunities afforded them. Over 1.3 million men and women have died in opposition to factions such as Marxism, Socialism, Communism, and other factions that would threaten our very freedoms. But we are now on the threshold of welcoming those factions with open arms. I place it in God's hands because the men and women that have been elected are corrupting the sacrifices of these brave men and women, welcoming and ushering in the very ideologies they died to protect us from. God have mercy on this nation. My prayer today, Father, is that we all will always be aware that you are the source of our liberty and that if we as a nation turn our liberty solely over to flawed humanity, then we will lose this precious gift you have entrusted to us. Father, give our, our leaders wisdom. Forgive our nation from our sins and grant your people courage and wisdom to stand for your principles. 
May God bless all members of our military services, and especially those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. May he welcome each of them home to his army of angels and give peace and comfort to those who will forever miss them. Please take time each day. Remember and pray for those who are being deployed, who are deployed, and who are preparing to deploy if that, uh, if that call comes. They're putting their lives on their line for us. I thank you for the time today. God bless each one and each and every one of the, our service members, those who have sacrificed and each of their family members. God bless each one here, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Steve. Oh, you don't need that, do you? You got it memorized, don't you? Helps I gotta have notes too. At this time, I have members from both American Legion and the uh, VFW that will be reading the names of those members who did not return from the uh, foreign wars that we've been involved with from Columbia County. World War I. Joseph Barnett, Wella Bingham, Hubert Bosher, Theodore Brabender, Richard Clayton, William Krauss, Arthur Crago, Dennis T. Eliff, Leonard J. Foster, Malcolm Gifford, William R. Gole, William Graff, Daniel M. Heck, Burgess Ham, Howard Hankins, Herman Jones, James E. Kelly, Earl T. Main, Edward S. Miller, Harry McDarby, Walter Obshansky, Lloyd Rivenberg, Louis Stemple, Edward Wheeler, Clarence J. Worth, Joseph C. Ziegler. Terry Vogel and Gary Wallace will read the names of the World War II veterans. John Bausch. Crawford Bain, Wallace Bloss, Alan V. Bordox, Dominic Cavallari, Donald Campbell, Leonard Casternino, Clyde Glosson, Joseph P. Conti, Anthony J. Carrado, James Crispino, Peter Halstead, Martin J. Healy, Frank L. Holmbeck, Byard F. Hover, John E. Hermance, George Hermance, Ernest Hewitt, Edward Holdridge, Edward Holsapel, James D. Holleran, Charles Hover, Chester Justrombeck, Herbert Johnson, Sherwood Kells, Jacob Kahn, Stanislaw Leck, Frank Logan, Raymond Moe, Michael Mahogan, Robert Meisner, Floyd E. Metz, Paul Myers. James D. Davis, Harry D. Dingman, William E. Dunsball, William C. Everts, Russell Finger, Harry Finn, John A. Fino, John Fitzgerald, Edward Fournier, Kenneth Grenner, Paul Glick, Roger McNamee, Claude Myers, Leonard Oram, Frankie Pacapi, Burton Poucher, Cyrus E. Sweet, Harold R. Sweet, 
Matthew Skrugu, George Shook, John Stravinsky, William Chovers, John Thomas, Philip DeCasey, Henry Teeter, John P. Wolfe, Edward M. Whitko, Michael Wasick, Arthur J. Whitbeck, John J. West, Thomas Williams, George Dunham, Vernon Bunk, John R. Igo, and Ralph Coxon. Rick Hallen for the Korean War. Edward J. Aiken, William H. Doss, Clifford S. Johnson, Donald McNaughton, Lawrence A. Morrison, Richard M. Powell, Norman W. Schneider. Randy Stats will read the names of the Vietnam vets, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, Iraq, and Afghanistan. I'd like to thank all the public, all the Vietnam veterans, and all the other veterans that come down here to support us today. This is getting harder and harder for me to read these names. William Anthony Brown, Henry Albert Coons, Albert J. Darling III, David Franklin Decker, Gary Edgar Field, Medal of Honor recipient Frank Rocco Falanico, Richard Kurt Gillingham, Daniel Eugene Gooden, Paul David Kraus, Razzo, I'm sorry, Michael Peter Kloltz, Ernest Regal Lasher Jr., John Joseph Malloy, Roger James Mazel, Carlton F. McCagg Jr., John C. Pfeiffer, Ronald Edward Rockefeller, Adrian Edward Sigler, Bradley Joseph Simmons, Jerry Allen Sweet, Beirut, Ronald Shallow, Iraq, Joseph Rokowski Jr., Afghanistan, Benjamin A. Stevenson. Thank you very much, people. These names we've read are inscribed on the monuments you see here at this park, lest we forget. Father, we do come before you today and we thank you for this great nation that was founded on the principles of your word. We thank you, Father, that it is a united states that you have created. And Father, we thank you for each of those men and women that have given their lives so graciously for each and every one of us that we could walk in that freedom. We stand here and we know that true freedom only comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we agree, Lord, that under your hand and your guidance do we walk and live. And so we pray not only, we, we thank you not only for those that have gone on before us, but we pray for each and every one that's in the services today, that your hand would be upon them, that they would turn their hearts towards you, that they would walk in your wisdom. And Lord, for each one of the family members that have lost someone, we pray that your Holy Spirit would come and just comfort each and every one of them. Lord, you said that <clears throat> the blood is the most precious thing that there is, and every covenant was made through blood. And Father, with all the blood that has been shed, we do, as my friend has already shared earlier, we repent for the sins of our country. We repent on behalf of those who have made decisions that would bring division. And Father, I pray that our hearts would be united, that our land would be united, and that as we walk forward on this Memorial Day, that we would remember your words to love you and love one another. 
Lord, we pray your blessing upon this great nation that as it would turn and walk in remembrance of you and therefore remembrance of all that was given for it, and then we would walk in such a way that the whole world would know that Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank you for this day, this time, this season in our lives for each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Present! Huh. All right. Four. 